guys, Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again. So it's the week before 4th of July, and I wanted to talk about a few things I'm doing on the channel, which is why I have the computer out right now. And also I wanted to talk about really just a small thing that came in recently, but it's significant to me, and it's right here. It's a Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy coal hopper. But this is important to me because this is my first freight car from Weaver Models. And as a lot of you already probably know, Weaver is unfortunately closing, if they haven't closed already. And uh, you won't be able to get anything like this anymore, along with their very nicely built brass steam locomotives. And up until recently, we thought that their paint division scale coat was going to be gone as well. But fortunately, scale coat has been bought out, I just learned the other day, by a company by the name of Minuteman Models and they're going to continue the scale coat line. So for people who use scale coat paint, and really scale coat is about the only kind of paint you want to use on an engine that's metal or brass or something like that. It really adheres to the metal very well. And I know quite a few guys that were very sad to hear of the loss of Weaver and of the potential loss of scale coat. Now I don't know if anyone's going to buy Weaver out or not, but I really would like them to because I really, really like this hopper. The paint is super crisp. Everyone talks about, who I've met, how great the paintwork is from Weaver and how fantastic their locomotives are. Well, for the freight car and the paint perspective, I can definitely say they're top tier. Not to mention the fact that Weaver was probably one of the last O-scale model train companies and just model train company in general whose production was still all based here in the United States. So I'm very happy I picked up this hopper. and. It's a bit of an oddity right now because this is a steam era hopper and I like to model mostly modern stuff. So this stuff is fairly small c compared to, say, some of my other stuff. But I still really like it. It's a great co little car to have. And maybe once I get a steam engine, I'll be able to run it with this. So there you have it. Now the next thing I wanted to discuss is a couple of things I've been doing on the channel. First of all, you guys may notice I'm shooting with my new camera that I got recently. Now, I shot a rail fanning video and a video running around the layout using this camera, and I posted both of those a few days ago. So if you haven't seen them, I'll post the links down there in the description box, and you can go check them out at your leisure. Now also, in terms of the rail fanning videos, you may notice that I've started doing narration with them. I've taken inspiration from that from a gentleman named Danny Harmon, whose YouTube videos I've been watching for several years now, pretty much ever since... 2008, I think, is when I first started watching his videos. And I've met him personally. He's a fantastic guy, super professional YouTube videos. And his YouTube channel name is Distant Signal Productions. So go check out Danny and give his channel a like. A lot of you guys may already know about his channel. But I've taken a lot of inspiration to do something like that. And it really kind of enhances my videos a little bit, in my opinion. Because I've gotten to the point where it's sort of boring to see the full length of the train in the video. Now I do still do that sometimes depending on the train but I've gotten a lot of critiques saying that the full length train in the video can get boring and a lot of people will skip around in the videos I've noticed so I'm gonna try to change that up a little bit and see what I can figure out and so far the reception of the videos with the commentary have been pretty good. I've actually gotten a lot of good um, feedback from it so I'm probably going to continue it. There was another video I did, which I, I shot using my Fuji, and it was a video of Southern Railway 4501 at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. So that was the first one, and that one was sort of a pilot to test the narration stuff out. And since it worked out so well, like I said, I'm going to continue it and see what else I can do with it. Something else that I've done recently with, as you saw at the beginning of this video, is I've added a new introduction to my videos. Um, I just found out the other day that YouTube has a audio and music library that's available to the public and available for free download, which you can then use to um, put into your video projects. And it's completely legal. So, since it is legal and no copyright attached to it, I'm going to be using a lot of stuff from this library in some of my videos in the future. The song that's in the intro here that I made at the beginning of this video is actually called, let's see here, Heavyweight. And it is in the rock and 
uh, metal genre section of the library. But there's a lot of other stuff. There's blues, there's pop, there's rap styles, you know, R&B, country, whatever you can think of, it's in there. And there's also a lot of things for various sound effects, you know, explosions, crashes, nails on a chalkboard, you name it, it's in there. So with the addition of the stuff from the library, I'm going to be using those in my videos to kind of enhance stuff a little bit more. A lot like what I'm doing with the narration for my rail fanning videos. There's something that I've always been wanting to do, and that's put music into my videos. But, unfortunately, because of copyright claims, I can't do that legally. Because I do not own the music. But, since this stuff is legal to use on YouTube, I will be doing that and using it in my videos. So be on the lookout for that as well. Another video to be looking at coming down the pipe is a review of the MTH Norfolk Southern Heritage Series ES44ACs. Now, in my last blog video, I showed that I got the Monongahela Heritage Unit from MTH. Well, my good friend Doug McAlexander, whose layout I showed again in a previous video, he has the Central of Georgia ES44, and I have asked him if he would mind if I shoot a review using his engine which he has granted me permission to do. Now that video is going to be shot over on Doug's layout because Doug has MTH's DCS system and he's got a full finished layout with two loops so you can run two trains at once. So I'll be able to operate both ES44s at the same time while I'm shooting this video. So be on the lookout for that in a few weeks and that should be pretty exciting. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Now getting back to rail fanning, there are a few other projects that I have in the works right now. The first one is going to be coming up in September, and that's going to be Railfest at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. I already shot a video of that last year. That's sort of becoming a yearly thing for me. I've done, I did one in 2014, I did one in last year, and I actually went in 2013 as well when I chased the 630, but I didn't make a video of that, so, oh well. I didn't have a good video camera at the time, so. I'll be chasing the 4501 on the main line between Cleveland and Chattanooga. So, kind of do what I usually do. Start out at Ottawa, head up to Cleveland to catch it, and then come back to Grand Junction and catch it again. Now, the 4501 is also going to be coming up the Greenville District in October, which, of course, is the main line that runs through my neck of the woods. And that's going to be an Atlanta to Tacoa trip. Now... The tickets have not gone on sale for that yet, but I'm going to see if I can get a ticket to ride that one, and if I do, I'll certainly be doing video coverage of it. Now, if that doesn't work out, I may end up chasing it. We'll just see what happens. And another thing that may happen, and this is a big may, um, I'm thinking about going back to Folkestone next year in January, kind of like I did at the first part of the year. I had a five-part series of videos that I shot in Folkestone. And my mom and I went down there, we stayed in the caboose. So we're thinking of doing a similar thing this year as well. Or we may end up going during Rail Watch. So, funding permitted, we will be going to Folkestone as well. So with that being said, that's about it for this video, guys. Not much else is going on. And uh, I'm going to go grab some supper and go out and catch Amtrak a little later. So until next time, this is Ravenhawk6910, signing off.